what's coming. Stephen Sondheim had his to come in. Do come in. 
Late? No, seven o'clock. <laughs> Casual, they say, fair is Easter tomorrow. Uh, oh, which reminds me, uh, please don't dash off afterwards because we are in fact having a supper uh, adjacent. You said the word adjacent. Uh, over there, not adjacent, adjacent, over there. Uh, and I've got to thank, I can see that, let me thank a few people. First of all, I'd like to um, thank IOFC for being so fantastic. Um, one of the songs we've probably heard in there is a fantastic Stephen Sondheim song called Being Alive. Uh, and I have two ladies who are in the front row, and I'm so thrilled that they're here tonight, have defied all the odds, and they are in fact being alive by being present here. Thank you for coming. Uh, a huge thank you to the Young Lord's Choir, who you will see later. You will see also a huge thank you to Tongji. We have some distinguished guests here from the Chinese consulate, so we're welcome. And we have a very distinguished man, Wei Nguyen, who is from currently known as, you'll correct me if I'm wrong, it is the Blind Sports and Recreation Victoria, soon to be Blind Sports and Arts, is that right, Morris? I mean, well, yes, I'm yeah. We are pushing very hard on the <laughs> arts front, <laughs> so, <laughs> on so uh, to all those people, thank you, and thank you most of all to you for coming along. And moving swiftly along, Stephen Sondheim's first big gig, of course, was to write with a... Uh, a guy called Lenny, Lenny Bernstein. Um, they did a, a, a musical, did pretty well. It's called, um, yeah, it's West Side Story. And of course, um, it won, I think, a, um, a fair sprinkling of um, Oscars and more. During this number, we're going to welcome a huge um, welcome for a fantastic violinist who is here, and her name is Romy Gearmans, and a fantastic singer who is with us. Ms. Very Harrell, and they will appear just as Stephen and Lenny would have uh, deemed it to be. This is West Side Story in 4 minutes and 20 seconds. Yeah, I know. It's a, ha it's a handful. Alright. Yeah. Mm. Um, I'm hoping, sorry, I've got the most. There's a grease at the door by these sublime creatures known as elves. They are volunteers led by the most wonderful Jackie Delore, who has been so helpful and so sensational. So a huge thank you to her.
was I offered a flower, uh, a fan, and I've never won some. Uh. And, and by the way, I say this to my dear friend Morris, do you know what, you come along, you hear music, and it's great, but what, what you can't get, um, which we had as a visual ballet display, so Morris, if you can think cheeky, if you can think um, Shanghai 1930s naughty, um, you're probably on the right track. <laughs> Um, Shanghai in the late 30s became somewhat of a refuge and possibly uh, not as often as other destinations but became quite a bastion for those refugees who were fleeing Nazi persecution in the late 1930s, particularly with uh, the change in the laws of the Nuremberg Laws and uh, after Kristallnacht. And Shanghai was home to more than 15 to 20,000 uh, fleeing refugees from persecution and we are thrilled to say that we are embarking on a project which is called Escape to Shanghai, which is depicting all that, and we are looking forward to developing that along with our Tongji partners and our Shanghai partners. And this next piece, I am humbled to say, it gives me great pleasure to do with some extraordinary dance from our principal choreographer here, Miss Nancy Yang. Please make it feel good. <laughs> And she will dance beautifully, and I'll do my utmost to accompany her to the rest of my life. And this is Dignity in Shanghai.
barbarian violin at hand, my spirit would soar. I was never alone. Young and Sebastian was with me. Such perfection of form, such nobility, such balance between maths and the abstract. Even after they came to take my ink sack away, I resolved to remain steely, unflappable, and detached. My gypsy soul stole away with the shakon. Raw, solid, dignified, and tragic at the same time. When I was informed that it was only a temporary measure, I was confused. They gave my chair in the front row of the violins to Hilda. <laughs> That awkward little urchin! <laughs> the creepy manager of the Munich Philharmonic promised I'd have my rifle placed back soon. I occupied myself with a partita, the E major concerto. Bach would never betray me. After all, we were both proud, artistic Germans. And yet, here I am today, grateful, humbled, <coughs> on an entirely different planet, different smells, <laughs> and high-pitched, rapid sounds made at all hours by the animated older Chinese ladies here in the market. I'm feeling adrift at sea and longing for land, but I'm alive. And the warmth the local musicians here in Pudong have shown me is comforting. I'm learning Mandarin and eating plenty of duck and rice, one tongue soup, and learning to enjoy the sound of Eru and squawking roosters at dawn. This is my escape to Shanghai. And as Confucius was often heard to remark, our greatest glory was not in never falling, but in rising every time we fall. Bravo. <laughs> I very true story from Munich Philharmonic Orchestra 1938. True story, principal violinist from the stage in Shanghai. Thank you, Gal. On we go.
And the guy who wrote the words to that song, which is I'm saying goodbye, which is from Escape to Shanghai, his name is Frank Housen. And when we last did a concert, we did a little section that was dedicated to Frank. And as I introduced the section, I went to play, and from A to G, didn't work. Just as I introduced the section of the show. Uh, anyway, we did the song with Bobby Bryce and Bobby Weller, and then when we finished that section, it was all working perfectly again. I'm not a piano technician, but go figure. <laughs> what can I tell you? What can I tell you? Okay, we have an incredibly talented lady who's, am I right? Am I right? Am I making this up? I'm very prone to making things up, am I? Am I? Am I? Am I? We have a very, very talented lady, um, and she's here. She is going to play traditional Chinese flutes, and for those who haven't seen them, don't fool around, don't try and do it at home, it's not worth it. Oh, but she's fantastic. And she is from Beijing, if I'm correct. Should we tell me yes, what I'm Beijing. Say? Beijing. I don't say anything, okay. Beijing. Uh, it could be a bit like the Sydney Melbourne kind of situation, nothing going on there. Would you make it feel very welcome, with Stephanie Chen? Thank you. <laughs> going to play, uh, I'm convinced when I say this, even for those who are not familiar with the Mandarin music repertoire, are probably the two most familiar pieces to Western ears, Steph, would you agree? Yes, very classical um, Chinese songs that I'm going to play, yes, for the uh, Chinese classical flutes and traditional flutes I'm about to play. Yes. <laughs> The first piece we're going to play is called Jasmine Flower, and the next piece, which in Mandarin is... Jasmine Flowers in Mandarin is called Mo Li Hua. And the next piece we play after that is called The Moon Represents My Heart. Which in Chinese is called Yue Liang Dai Biao Xin. Yue Liang Dai Biao Xin. Exactly. Exactly. So... Hope everyone enjoys. Let me say you're the dragon. Long yen quite a lot. Long yen. Long yen quite a lot. Thank you. 
oh, this is what I'm playing. I didn't have a screen. I didn't smoke. I said, no, you don't. You play so beautifully. Stand there and play. People love it. She's fantastic.
what is with me? I said, you didn't, yeah, well, I wanted to dress up like a, you know, like a, like a, like, like in the settlement. Is that like so a, I want to tell you a story. Is this supposed to have corks on? <laughs> it has to be with the old uniforms and not uniforms, but you know, like they work in the fields and, so my grandma is from Iraq, from Baghdad. Don't forget Baghdad. Baghdad. Um, and she told us, I mean, uh, the grandchildren, some amazing stories. But this one story that she said, she told us before, when they came, when they went to the settlement, she said, you know, we were so excited to come to Israel, to the land of milk and honey. Yeah. And guess what? No honey, no milk. There was just plain land with nothing, nothing. And my my grand, my mom actually, um, she, my grandma was pregnant with my mom, and very pregnant. And don't ask. Uh, you you probably remember the, when they kidnapped kids and uh, they didn't. It happened to my grandma. They kidnapped my my mom, and then she knew that it's not her. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Anyway, so the next song is Slicha Shabbati, which is like it's a comedy, it's a French Dishon, it was crazy, it was amazing actually writer. And 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 yeah, our topple, our dear topple performed in this beautiful Salah Shabbati, which is Slicha Shabbati, which means I'm sorry that I came. Yeah, but yeah, at the end, of course, they developed and they, they were happy and, but still, land of milk and honey, we still pray for that.
גם שולחן. לקחו אותי, לקחו אותי, נתנו לי בית שכולו מפח. לקחו אותי, לקחו אותי. מתי כבר גם אני אקח?
like to do it. <laughs> <laughs> when I say rehearse, I mean that in the loosest sense of the word. <laughs> this is a very, very true story, very true, uh, powerfully true, about two people who are entrapped in one of the worst, uh, worst parts of human history. But even in the most deprived conditions of depravity, uh, they managed to maintain a love affair and True story following the liberation of the Great of Auschwitz in 1945, the uh, guy who was the tattooist made his way uh, back to Slovakia, waiting to find his Gita, who he hoped, hope upon hope, may have somehow survived the trauma. After lying at station for three weeks amongst thousands of people who were obviously displaced to Europe after this period, uh, he actually saw a cousin of his. He said, Oh my God, I'm looking for Gita. Is she anywhere to be found? And the cousin said, yeah, she was, she's up in the house over there. Yeah, it's only 300 metres away. Anyway, he went up there and he proposed. They got married and via a very circuitous so route, they made their way to Australia. And on the day that she went up to Queensland uh, in order to embark on an adoption program, which they didn't think they'd be able to see children because of the most horrific events that unfolded there, they got a, a call from their GP announcing the fact that she was, you guessed the pregnant. Uh, so there you go, talk about roses uh, being born in a pile of dirt, uh, true story. And we thought we'd do a song to finish with that sums all that up, uh, but in a way that three or four year olds can understand, because that's uh, quite important. So this is Lali Peter. <laughs> Thank you. 